great. So um, I am Dr. Samina, and so today what we're going to really talk about is hormones and everything about hormones. So we're really going to get to understand um, the different parts of the endocrine system that makes up various hormones in our body. So I'm really excited to show this, share this with you today. Okay, let's see if I can move this slide. Oh yeah, I can. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to go back here. So what if I told you that the health of your hormones can really impact the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you look? It's so important to like really dive into hormone health to really understand how these hormones are affecting you. Our hormones change every single day. So it's really important to recognize some of these changes or things that we're experiencing could be related to our hormones and the way that we can experience life. So let's learn a little bit why. But first, a little bit about me. So Ashley kind of introduced me. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a history of my hormone journey. Um, I struggled with cystic acne as a teenager and then also in my early 20s. Um, and this really caused me to learn a little bit more about my hormones. I remember going to see a naturopath and she kind of put all the clues together and said, it looks like you might have polycystic ovarian syndrome. So I decided to go and get an ultrasound and blood work. My doctor was really willing to help me out to figure out if I had PCOS. And we actually found out that it was. Um, and so then I started to like figure out what I could do. Um, the, the last thing I hadn't tried was birth control pills. And so I decided to try it because I had been on antibiotics for about five years to try to control the acne. And it was helping, but it wasn't necessarily getting, you know, clear skin. So I tried it. I became depressed. And then that's when, you know, the, my regular cycle started happening after coming off birth control. So then um, that's what when I actually went to see a naturopath and she kind of helped guide me in getting the diagnosis of PCOS. But that was really my turning point when I met with the ND. I really was uh, able to understand my hormones and understand how they were help impacting the way I think, the way I feel, the way I act and look. And so I decided to take action, learn everything I could about hormone health. And I knew I needed to help women who are just like me um, kind of figure out what's going on with their specific hormones. So I studied reproductive um, health and fertility in school. I was able to also work at a fertility clinic to really dive into hormones. Um, and so I feel like I have a really, really good grasp on hormone health and how it can impact so many parts of our lives. So we're gonna talk a lot about that today. First things first, we just want to ask, or I just want to ask, actually, um, the group that's here is what category would you fall under in terms of your age so that I can really tailor this conversation um, in making sure we talk about hormones throughout all stages of our lives. So we're going to um, throw this questionnaire up and hopefully we can get some answers to see what type of women are on the call today. This is only going to be up for about another 10 seconds. So please make sure that you select an answer so that we can move on and get into the most exciting part of the presentation. OK, so it's pretty split. So that's great. OK, so what I'll do is I'm going to talk um, all about the reproductive age, but then maybe I'll touch upon uh, menopause and perimenopause a little bit as well. OK, let's keep going. Okay. So basically what we're going to be talking about is the three keys of, um, you know, balancing hormones. We're going to talk about what you can do today so that you can walk away with specific things that you can do. And then next steps in terms of what you can do after that. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll keep going with that. Okay, so the first thing is clarity. I always um, found that working with a naturopath 
or just even myself, just really understanding hormones is one of the biggest keys um, to really guiding yourselves in terms of learning and understanding what's going on with your body. You are the person who really knows your body inside and out. So gaining clarity about your own specific body and hormones is really important. So let's learn about that. So hormones are key messengers in the body that take care of so many important functions. They're actually like a teacher of a classroom, keeping everyone in time, making sure everyone's on their best behavior, that there's order. And so it's really, you know, a fine tuned system. And so we're gonna talk about three different areas of the endocrine system. So the thyroid, the adrenal glands, and the reproductive system. These are some of the common symptoms we see when um, hormones are a little bit imbalanced. So weight gain, you know, specifically maybe around the midsection, uh, maybe on your thighs, your abdomen, um, arms, but typically mostly on that midsection area around the hips, things like that, um, or areas like that. Fatigue, such a big one, especially when it comes to adrenal glands, but also the thyroid and also our reproductive hormones. Irregular or absent periods mood changes, loss of sex drive, insomnia, uh, foggy thinking or brain fog, um, heavy cycles, um, infertility, acne or even dry skin, um, even hair loss, that's not one that's on here, uh, craving specifically for maybe salts or sweets, and then um, sweating, maybe those hot flashes. So we're gonna th throw up a poll here as well and kind of see have any of you experienced one or more of these symptoms um, that we're presenting here today? So let's see how many of you have actually experienced any of these symptoms. Um, that way we can kind of see like how we can actually help. But yeah, make sure you get your answer in as soon as possible. Um, because we're going to close the poll in a few seconds. Yeah, so I knew this was going to be a yes, <laughs> but I just wanted to show you like hormone health is so uh, vast in all the symptoms that you could be experiencing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, just related to the reproductive system. It can be so many other symptoms that um, we might not commonly think about. Making sure I can move this. Oops, okay, there we go. So in terms of hormones, uh, looks like the path, this is the hormone pathway. And, you know, just to bring your attention up here that cholesterol is actually where the pathway starts off. Cholesterol then gets made into progesterone. Progesterone eventually gets made into androstenedione and then eventually testosterone. And testosterone actually gets created into estrogen which is so interesting. Um, and so like knowing this pathway, it can kind of help guide us in terms of learning where the blockage might be or where the disconnect or imbalance is. Um, and so that's kind of why we look at this whole hormone picture to make sure everything kind of is in balance. What's really interesting is there are many cofactors that are actually involved in this pathway. And one of the biggest ones is B vitamins. So we find that a lot of times if we're not getting enough B vitamins in our diet, maybe something like a B complex can be really helpful to support the balance of hormones. Oops. So the thyroid, let's talk about the thyroid. The thyroid is so, so important. Um, if you don't know, already know, the thyroid actually sits in your neck. It's this butterfly shaped organ um, and it actually affects every single part of your body. It's especially important when you're trying to have a family and in menopause, but also just in general. If you're having symptoms like um, intolerance to cold temperatures, so you're always that person wearing a sweater or your hands or feet are cold, maybe the thyroid could be affected there. Um, another big symptom is constipation, um, you know, brain fog, memory loss, 
uh, weight gain or inability to lose weight, even though you're like trying to do everything you can possibly do, um, you know, nothing shifting. Fatigue is a huge one. Oftentimes people will say when they have thyroid issues that they feel like they're dragging themselves throughout the day. So that's really important to also consider. Some of the minerals we know that can really help to support the thyroid are things like iodine, but iodine shouldn't be taken if there's any uh, thyroid nodules or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, selenium um, is really important for that conversion from T4 to T3, or active form of the thyroid hormone. Iron is also really important, vitamin D, and also B vitamins. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> B vitamins are so important. So yeah, let's just talk a little bit about how the thyroid actually works. So what happens is in our brain, we release something called thyroid releasing hormone. This is TRH. It signals to the pink or pituitary gland, sorry, um, that uh, to release TSH. So we're still in the brain at this point. Once the TSH is released, this is thyroid stimulating hormone. It stimulates the thyroid to release T4. This is, you know, really important function of the thyroid is creating that T4 hormone. However, in order to actually gain the impact and function of the thyroid is to create T3 from T4. This is the activated form of the thyroid hormone, T3 hormone. This is what carries out all the functions that I kind of just spoke about. And so one of the biggest minerals we know that helps with that conversion is selenium. And what can happen if, if there's elevated amounts of stress, so cortisol or inflammation, this can increase reverse T3. This is an inactive form of the thyroid hormone. So it's really important when we're checking the thyroid is to check what's not only happening in the pituitary gland with our TSH, but then what's happening with our T3 and T4. So both of these hormones to really understand, are we actually converting T4 to T3. So the adrenal glands, so, so, so important um, to functioning on the day-to-day -day basis. And so these tiny glands, they actually sit on top of our kidneys. Um, this is the adrenal gland down here. And they're triangle-shaped um, gland that helps release cortisol. Um, and its main function is to release that cortisol in times of stress. So, you know, when we're talking about that fight or flight response, um, if we're, you know, always on, always ready, um, we kind of talk about this in terms of like being ready to fight or flight. So like running away from a bear or like fighting a bear. This is kind of like when our, you know, adrenal glands kick in, we create lots of cortisol. And maybe that's not the case now. We're not running away from bears, hopefully, <laughs> um, because most of us are in our homes. But even also in normal daily lives without COVID, we're probably not going to be encountering a bear. But oftentimes, we're, we can actually create the same response to things that are stressful in our day-to-day -day environments. So this could be something like... Um, you know, somebody honking at you or you're late for an appointment or you're just about to write a test or go into a meeting to present to executives or your team. Um, this can actually do the same thing where you feel like you're in that fight or flight response. And so let's go over the different types of, um, you know, stages of adrenal fatigue. The first stage being that alarm stage, right? In this yellow column, that fight or flight response. We're constantly on, we're running on adrenaline. You know, maybe somebody walks by and you don't notice that they're coming and then you, that startles you. Like those types of feelings um, could be that you're feeling you're in that fight or flight response, feeling anxious, um, worrying and thinking about things. Um, and so being in an alarm stage can really impact our ability to um, stay balanced and, you know, more so in that homeostasis and the good health section here in green. Second stage of adrenal fatigue is called adrenal fatigue. So basically in the resistance stage, we are always kind of on and ready just in case there's something stressful we have to deal with. Um, adrenal fatigue really is, you know, if you've gone to school for like 10 years or like, 
even just going through university, you're always kind of on and ready to like get to the next thing, do the next assignment or project, or maybe, you know, you're helping your kids, you know, figure out um, how to do their homework or figuring out like what you're going to eat and cook and just always constantly having to do something, working in this like state of um, uh, almost like frantic state of just like so much to do, so little time, feeling overwhelmed. Patients who are feeling uh, adrenal fatigued often say they feel like tired, but they're wired. They're like always on, always ready, running on adrenaline. Then what will happen is at the end of the day when they're trying to go to sleep, they can't fall asleep because their mind is constantly thinking, racing, planning. And um, over time, if we keep on going this way, what can happen is like, we stay in this resistance stage because we're, you know, we can still get through the day. We'll use coffee, we'll use whatever we need to like get through the day. But eventually what can happen is we can um, stop making cortisol in that resistance stage. We're constantly kind of making a little bit of cortisol to help um, get through the day. But if we get to a point where we're in this ad adrenal exhaustion phase, what can happen is that now we don't, we're not able to make cortisol. So these are patients who are feeling like, there's, it's so difficult to get out of bed. They could like stay in bed the whole day. Um, their energy is so burned out. Um, they're feeling like uh, their brain is foggy, so they can't think. They can't remember if they just, you know, um, sometimes what they'll say is like they can't remember if they, um, you know, uh, wash their hair if they're in the shower. They're like, did I just wash my hair? And then they'll wash their hair again um, just to make sure. So sometimes we can be in this exhaustion phase where we're constantly not making enough cortisol. We're feeling really, really tired. Little tasks take us so long to like finish or even like the motivation is gone. So high or low cortisol can actually impact our thyroid function as well. So anytime there's any issues with the thyroid, we should always be looking at the adrenal glands. So these um, glands um, can be really supported by zinc. Magnesium is a huge one. Uh, vitamin C is also a really, really big one here. And surprise, surprise, B vitamins. Uh, so important for the adrenal glands. Okay, so I think we have a poll question now. And basically, we just want to see, like, are you in stage one, two, or three? Where do you think you sit on the three stages of this syndrome? Okay, we're gonna give a few more seconds here and let's see where you guys are sitting. Sometimes it can be difficult to recognize what stage you're in, um, but maybe you already have an idea based on the information I gave. And if you don't know, that's totally fine too. Yeah, so most people sitting in that adrenal fatigue stage, which majority of people are actually sitting there. And it's really important when we're in this stage is to really help support that adrenal gland. If you're feeling anxious, if we're feeling, you know, a little bit depressed, you know, maybe some herbs can actually help here. Passion flower, valerian root, really, really good supportive herbs to help calm the nervous system down. Um, ashwagandha, a really good one for um, helping with feelings of down, feeling down, depressed, hopeless. Um, so really important to, you know, maybe consider some botanicals um, that we know can really be helpful. Another one is ashwagandha, a really good one for the adrenal fatigue stage to help with resistance in terms of energy, uh, fatigue, but also stress um, and anxiety. Let's see here. Looks like I need a little bit of help moving this along. Okay, perfect. So the reproductive system, I like to call this the theme park <laughs> uh, because it's a fun place to be, but it needs a lot of work and ma maintenance and uh, you know order to function properly every single day. Our, you know, the whole function of the reproductive system needs to be fine-tuned and changes every single day in such minute changes 
that can impact, again, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we look. So it's really, really important to focus in on looking at the hormones, what's going on on that third day of the menstrual cycle, what's happening to LH, FSH, estradiol, but then what's also happening in the second half of the cycle, um, you know, before we get our periods in terms of PMS. Again, really good supplements here are magnesium, B6, uh, very specific to PMS and the reproductive system, and vitamin D. We know there's actually vitamin D receptors sitting in this endometrium, um, so it's actually really important vitamin to be using in terms of hormone health as well. So making sure levels are appropriate is really important. So I'm just going to briefly talk about this one, um, but basically these are some of the symptoms that we usually see. High estrogen, if you know PMS symptoms are really bad, maybe you're getting migraines, maybe you know heart palpitations, anxiety, things like that. Um, we can see higher levels of estrogen in compared to progesterone in the second half of the cycle. As we start to get into perimenopause, we start to see lower levels of estrogen. So we start to see things like mood changes, insomnia, night sweats, low libido, decrease um, in hair, hair loss actually increases, um, hot flashes, but we can also go between high estrogen and low estrogen, especially uh, right before perimenopause um, and when, when menopause is hitting, we get into these levels of high and low estrogen, sorry, um, and these fast, fast changes can really impact our cycles. We can get irregular cycles, heavy cycles, things like that. We can start to feel the changes in our moods. So really important to look at estrogen in that part of life. So high progesterone, not very common. You know, obviously we get higher progesterone when we're um, pregnant, but low progesterone is kind of where we really want to assess for because that can impact PMS, right? We have more breast tenderness, maybe there's anxiety, insomnia, acne can pop up, um, heart palpitations, um, water retention, so bloating, and even hot flashes here as well. Oftentimes just a little bit of progesterone can help with um, calming hot flashes down as well. Okay, so now we finished clarity. So I feel like hopefully you kind of have a good understanding of the three parts of the endocrine system that we went over today. And so the biggest, you know, second biggest thing is really getting that confidence. And, you know, I always like to say a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step because all you need to be doing is really fine tuning one thing at one time. So if there's one thing you take away from this presentation today, when we get into the next section is just choose one thing that can really help support you um, and that you know you can change and uh, make it a habit and then slowly start to change things one, one at a time. Okay, so control. Control is all about you know, making the change and feeling in control of your health. That's like really what I want to drive home in this part of the presentation. So let's go over some ways, uh, things you can do today. So diet, we know diet is like the foundation of health and it's so, so important to be making sure that our diet is top notch so that we're fueling our body for success. So we always talk about whole food um, diet, right? Lots and lots of good vegetables, you know, good source of lean protein, um, you know, good healthy fats. A lot of women are missing healthy fats. And I showed you at the very beginning, um, cholesterol is the backbone, the first thing in the, in the hormone pathway. So making sure you get good healthy fats, maybe a good fish oil in there is so, so important. Um, what did I miss? Lean protein, lots of vegetables, healthy fats, and all the carbohydrates, right? Really doing those complex carbohydrates, brown rice, quinoa, buckwheat, millet, um, you know, making sure that the, the types of carbohydrates you're choosing aren't gonna impact your blood sugar. So refrigerator refresh. So this is one thing I, you know, would challenge you to do is just go into your refrigerator this weekend and take out all the things, you know, that aren't serving you and start building that fridge to really support um, your health, um, especially now that we have some people might have a little bit more time to do that. 
And then, you know, beat the sweets. Um, you know, sugar can really impact all areas of the endocrine system we talked about today. So your adrenal glands, your thyroid, your reproductive system. The more and more you take that out, the better you'll feel. And I do have a five-day sugar-free challenge. So if you want to go on to my website or Instagram, it's posted there um, just to help kickstart your sugar-free journey um, and just help to like beat the cravings of sweets. Fresca family vegetables are really important for estrogen detoxification. Um, so it really depends on the patient, but you can always add these in broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, kale, cabbage. These are all really good ones to help support our estrogen levels. So the liver, the liver is the powerhouse of our body, um, always making sure that it um, you know, removes toxins and that hormones are metabolized properly. It's so important to make sure that uh, when we get through the two phases of liver detoxification, that we're actually eliminating some of these things from our body. Um, so phase one of liver detoxification makes um, you know, toxins or hormones into their metabolites. And then once they're in those uh, forms, then eventually they'll be you know, put into a waste product so that they can be eliminated through the body, through urine and through stool. So it's really important that you're good, having good, healthy bowel movements. And I just want to bring your attention to this. Um, you know, some of the toxins that we're exposed to are things like BPA, parabens, and phthalates. And so really important to just check your, you know, all your products at home, your makeup, your, um, you know, health, health products, like even just, um, sorry, your beauty products, I mean, um, your moisturizer, your facial cleanser, your body wash, like just make sure that these toxins aren't there because that can really impact our liver's ability to detoxify. So it's really important to make sure that uh, you're, you know, choosing um, things that you're putting on your body even that aren't filled with toxins that will impact your liver's function. Okay, so the next thing is mindfulness. We know that stress really impacts hormones, um, but just you know, becoming more mindful can really calm the body, bring more awareness to what's happening in our internal state. It can decrease that cortisol response. So if you're feeling like you're in that alarm stage or in that adrenal fatigue spot, it can really help with that. It brings oxygen to the brain. So sometimes I just like to think, someone told me once, um, drink the air and so that was so interesting just like take a deep breath and like drink that and put it into your body take lots of deep breaths throughout the day that can really help to bring oxygen to your brain give your give yourself a little bit of energy but then also allows a proper digestion as well and we know this regulates hormones so you know for me mindfulness has become a practice over many 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 years and so oftentimes it can be really daunting to like go and start meditating or becoming more mindful but even just like you know right before you're eating lunch or dinner or even when you first wake up in the morning just like using your fingers what are like five things that I'm grateful for right um or taking three deep breaths like right before you eat all of those th little things can actually really impact you every hour on the hour check in with yourself what do I need right now do I need water do I need a deep breath do I need to call somebody? Do I need to listen to some music? Do I need to stretch? You know, just becoming more mindful in your day to day can really have a huge, huge impact on the way you think, feel, and look, and really impact your hormones. Okay, exercise. So this is a fit plan. Um, so this is typically, you know, two to three times a week is what most people should be aiming for. The intensity being, you know, 60 to 80% of your maximum heart rate um, and time usually 30 to one hour. The type really depends on you. Um, oftentimes, you know, if, if it's too high intensity, if you're finishing the workout and you're feeling really tired and exhausted after, maybe the intensity is too high. So you can bring that down a little bit. Um, and just, you know, feel out what your body is most, most comfortable with. So just a little bit about naturopathic medicine. So one of the big things I love to do is lab work. Um, so like using the labs to really identify what's going on and finding out what that root cause is, um, is through lab work. Um, definitely through symptoms as well, but the lab work really gives us that confirmation. 
Some of the best um, lab tests we know of for hormone health um, is testing the blood, but also urine and saliva can also be tested for hormones like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol. Supplements are really important, I think, um, but also only important once you have those foundations of health built. So you're eating well, you're exercising, your sleep is good, your stress is good, and then we know we add supplements maybe to help get you to the basis of a foundations of health, um, but also just to help supplement um, kind of what you're already doing um, and figuring out you know, your diet and your lifestyle. It always should be tailored to you. Um, I see a lot of women with reproductive health issues, and every single person has a different protocol because their bodies, everybody's bodies are different in how they experience, um, you know, PMS, for example. One person might experience PMS way different than another person, and I'm sure you've heard that too when talking to your friends about how they experience PMS. So acupuncture, it can be really great with, you know, balancing hormones, really helping that nervous system. What it does is it helps to bring, you know, blood flow to the reproductive organ. So really helpful in that case. Um, but, you know, acupuncture can also be good at really just calming that nervous system down, really supportive for things like uh, patients who are trying to conceive, uh, PCOS, so for ovulation, hot flashes, um, insomnia. So many um, case scenarios there. So let's end with the very first thing we came with is what if I told you the health of your hormones can really impact the way you think, the way you feel, and you the way you look? I hope that was really drilled home today in learning a little bit about the different types of hormones and what you can do to really help get you feeling better and thinking better and looking better. Okay, oops, I'm just gonna go back here. And I'm gonna um, just pass it over to Ashley. She's gonna talk a little bit about two PASCO products that are for hormone health. Thank you, Dr. Samina. Thank you so much. I learned so much this evening and I'm sure everyone else did. Um, I guess I'll start with Pasco Femin and I'm not sure if Neuropass was before or after, but could you just switch it for me quickly if you could when I get to it. Uh, so Pasco Femin is a product that of course is special because it can help all of us women that are listening here today. And we all naturally go through those times of hormone imbalances and have symptoms such as, you know, headaches, bloating, mood swings, possibly irritability, um, as Dr. Samina mentioned. And so Pasco Feminine is actually a homeopathic remedy and it is hormone free, a hormone free alternative and can help with those symptoms such as uh, of PCOS or menopause and perimenopause. And I also wanted to note that you can check out our promotion on our website homepage specifically for this product right now. And it's currently running until May 15th. So can I also talk about Neuropass, wherever that one is? <laughs> Thank you. So again, for our audience, I will briefly, as I said, cover another product. And Neuropass is an entirely herbal remedy that helps promote a healthy, balanced mood. And as mentioned by Dr. Smina, this product contains ingredients that can help with that balancing mechanism. So it contains St. John's wort, valerian, and passion flower. And it's very effective due to the synergistic properties of the three ingredients working together. So when people might be struggling with their mood or experiencing prolonged changes in mood or prolonged stress. This, of course, can affect things like energy levels, motivation, and productivity. And all of those stressors can also, you know, not only have an effect on mental health, but could end up having an effect on physical health as well. So Neuropass is a research-based formula that helps address these concerns and bring individuals back to feeling like themselves or to that healthy, balanced mood, which is kind of where we all like to be. So 
Uh, Dr. Samina, I do have some wonderful questions for you to ask for you to answer. Um, if you're ready, I can I can do that. <laughs> I'm ready, yeah. Okay, perfect. So I've noticed I am getting um, more bloated during perimenopause. Is, are there any suggestions of how to help that? Yeah, you know, bloating is so vast in the causes of bloating so first thing is like when is the bloating happening is it every day after meals is it when you first wake up in the morning is it just before you know certain periods that are coming along so it really depends on for example when it's happening how it's happening and the severity um, because if it's every day it could be after meals it could be you know an issue with digestion Maybe not enough digestive enzymes are there to really break down the food. So then when it gets to the small intestine, there's more um, food particles there for bacteria to eat off of and make more gas. So that could be one of the issues. Um, if it's waking up with um, bloating uh, right before you even eat anything, it could be something called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, uh, which is an overgrowth of a bacteria in the small intestine. And so that needs to be looked at in terms of testing and then also um, in terms of um, killing the microbes that are um, overgrown in that small intestine. If it's, you know, before a period, um, it could be related to progesterone. So we know progesterone can cause water retention and bloating. So it's really about figuring out what's happening in that second half of the cycle in terms of hormones, um, depending on what your cycle looks like in testing estrogen and progesterone, and then balancing the hormones, maybe using, you know, supplements or even um, giving a little bit of natural progesterone or even just balancing that out um, with a little bit of... Um, estrogen support so it really depends on like where it's coming from okay perfect thank you so much dr samina um another one is i have very heavy periods and almost happening there um every three weeks mm -hmm. i have been checked i guess internally and there's no organ issues uh okay. what do you think would be the you know underlying cause of this or how to help yeah, so if, you know, an ultrasound sounds like an ultrasound has been done. Um, what the biggest thing needs to be ruled out is um, fibroids, right? Because um, that can cause heavy bleeding. Um, but also, you know, from what I see, this can also be low progesterone, high estrogen, especially in that second half of the cycle. Um, so oftentimes in my personal experience, um, personal and professional experience is uh, using progesterone can actually stop the bleeding. Um, so, you know, just based on what I've seen with patients when there's heavy bleeding, that's really the only thing that like actually changes things um, and stops the bleeding from happening. So that's what I would consider in that case. So this is bioidentical natural progesterone. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I have lots of hair loss during um, my period or around my period. How can I help that? So during period, during her period and around her, so before her period? It says during my period time. So. Mm. Okay. So there could be a few things happening here. It could be that testosterone is rising at this time if the patient has PCOS, um, because in the first half of the cycle, we start making estrogen, but we're also making testosterone um, in certain cases. So if we're making more testosterone, then that could be one of the causes of the hair loss. So there's so many causes of hair loss. One is iron deficiency, right? So if we're in our periods, um, we're obviously losing lots of blood. So if we're losing iron, that can also cause hair loss. So really checking the iron status is really important. So testosterone is the second one. Um, insulin resistance, so our balance of blood sugar, um, that can really impact our ability to like keep the hair in our head. <laughs> so the more we have these imbalances, more insulin resistance can lead to more testosterone and that can cause inflammation in the follicle and the follicle can then, you know, fall out. The hair can fall out of the follicle. 
So that's really important. Um, and then other nutritional deficiencies, B12, vitamin D, uh, folate, iron, like we said, um, and then the thyroid, looking at the thyroid. If there's any hypothyroidism, um, that's when we usually see the hair is breaking. So maybe it's not coming from the follicle. So like when you, you know, a hair falls out, we see that bulb. Um, that's more could be related to testosterone. Um, and then if it's breaking, it could be more so due to um, the thyroid. So hopefully that can like guide that patient a little bit. Yeah. Thank you so much. So informative. Um, I have no energy and oh. I feel fatigued almost to do anything really. What should I do? Can you repeat? Can you read it? Sorry. I have yeah. no energy and I feel fatigued all of the time and I have little interest to do anything. What should I do? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things in this case is looking at the thyroid if there's that like fatigue like feels like you're dragging yourself um you know lack of motivation um but also it could be the adrenal glands like we talked about so maybe it could also just be adrenal fatigue if everything looks perfect on the thyroid panel tsh t3 t4 all look perfect it could also be cortisol or stress hormone um, and maybe you're getting into that you know adrenal fatigue exhaustion phase that we talked about um, so in cases like that, it's really about building up the body back up. So using things like yoga, deep breathing, walking, um, herbal products can be really great here, um, especially ones that give us a little bit of more energy, um, things like ashwagandha, lithococcus, but any of these herbs, you know, make sure that you talk to your naturopath or um, herbalist before taking any of these um, herbs because they can interact with medications and other supplements. Perfect. Um, another one, I guess, related to what you just said. Um, I feel like I'm in adrenal fatigue, or that's what I put in the poll. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the types of herbs or products that can help me kind of get out of that? Yeah, so, you know, I talked a lot about B vitamins today. Um, you know, in that slide where it goes, we talk a little bit about adrenal fatigue and the three stages, magnesium, vitamin C, uh, B vitamins, so, so important um, to help nourish that adrenal gland. Um, and then there's also herbal products that we've already kind of talked about, but I think that could be a really good starting point. Um, but again, it's, um, it's really important to get assessed on which section you're on because if you're taking the wrong supplements it can be it can impact the body as well but you know a b complex is pretty harmless so that can be like a pretty good starting point great thank you so much dr Sina. that's actually all of the questions that i have here um and I want to thank you, of course, and our audience. And I also want to say happy Mother's Day to everyone celebrating. And I hope that everyone celebrates this weekend safely. Uh, just to mention, if we didn't answer any of your questions or you think about them later this evening or next week or whatever, uh, please follow us on Instagram as well as Dr. Samina. And if you don't already, and send any of your remaining questions and we will be happy to answer. And I hope everyone had a great time this evening. I did. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day or evening, wherever you're calling in from. But thank you, Dr. Samina. If you want to say anything else, I welcome you. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed talking and answering all the questions. But yeah, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to answer them. Perfect. Thank you. And I am sure I will talk to you soon and see you soon. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Have a good evening.